Hi there, I'm Sam from solar.com and today we're going to explore whether it's worth it or not to put solar panels on your house in Massachusetts. Now to do this, we're going to take a look at grid electricity prices, the incentives available in Massachusetts, and the environmental benefits of solar panels. So let's do this. Now, first off, let's just get it out of the way that Massachusetts is not the sunniest state in the U.S. I'm well aware of this. But what it lacks in sun, it more than makes up for in high electricity prices and robust state and federal solar incentives. In fact, at the round 31 cents per kilowatt hour, Massachusetts has the third highest average residential electricity price in the nation, second only to Hawaii and whatever the heck New Hampshire is. And in fact, at 31 cents per kilowatt hour, that's about, that's more than double the average residential electricity rate in the US. Now, if you zoom into the Boston metro area, the average price of electricity is close to 39 cents per kilowatt hour as of March, 2023. And that was up 45% from March, 2022. I'm gonna say that again for clarity. Electricity prices rose 45% in one year in the Boston metro area. And that's not exactly a trophy that you want to have in your case in Titletown. Now, if these current electricity prices continue to rise at a modest rate of 2.5% annually, then buying 7,200 kilowatts of electricity per year, which is below the national average, over 25 years from a utility provider would cost around $78,000 using the statewide average and around $95,000 if you're in the Boston metro area. Now for a comparison, $95,000 would buy you season tickets at Fenway for 35 years. So next we're gonna compare the cost of staying on grid to the cost of buying the same exact amount of electricity uh, using a home solar system with and without solar incentives. Factoring in degradation, efficiency loss, and average weather patterns, it would take around a six kilowatt solar system to produce 7,200 kilowatt hours of electricity in Massachusetts. Now for reference, that would be 15 panels that are 400 watt panels each. <clears throat> now one way to measure the cost of a solar system is in price per watt, which typically ranges from $3 per watt to $5 per watt. So if you have a six kilowatt system, that's 6,000 watts, and let's use $5 per watt to be ultra conservative. That would equal a $30,000 system. Now, if you pay cash, that $30,000 is your all-in cost for electricity for the 25 years that your panels are warrantied. If you take out a 20-year loan, you'll have lower monthly payments, uh, but the interest will add up to around $50,000 over 25 years. Now, in this scenario, you've already saved up to $65,000 just with the solar system alone, but Massachusetts has a handful of solar incentives that can reduce the cost of the system and thereby increase your energy cost savings over those 25 years. So let's check those out. Now the first incentive that would kick in is a sales tax exemption on solar equipment. Now Massachusetts has a sales tax rate of 6.25% and for a $30,000 solar system that would equal $1,875 and that's $1,875 that you don't have to pay. Next, there's a property tax exemption on solar equipment. So it's well documented that solar panels increase your home value, but with this property tax exemption, you don't have to pay additional property tax based on the value that solar adds to your home. Now these tax exemptions are nice, but here come the big boys, because Massachusetts has two solar tax credits that you can use to reduce the cost of your system. First, there's the federal tax credit worth 30% of what you spend on solar and or battery systems. Now for a $30,000 system, that's gonna be worth $9,000. And second, Massachusetts has its own state credit that's worth 15% of the cost of a solar system up to $1,000. Now in a system like this, you're gonna cap out at $1,000. But when you add the two tax credits together, that takes $10,000 off the cost of the system, reducing your net cost to $20,000. Now here's that graph again with the tax credits factored in. 
Buying the system with cash provides the greatest lifetime savings, but it takes around six to eight years to recover the upfront investment. And by taking out a 20 year loan, you have the greatest day one savings and the lowest energy payments of all the options, but it adds around $15,000 in interest costs. Now the right way to finance your solar system depends on your energy goals but it's crystal clear that home solar is way more affordable than sticking with grid electricity in Massachusetts. And we're not even through all the incentives yet. Now the next incentive to be aware of is the Solar Massachusetts Renewable Target Program, which is known simply as SMART. And through this program, utility providers actually compensate you for the production of your solar system. Now the SMART program runs for 10 years from when your system is turned on and the compensation comes in the form of a monthly check or bank deposit. Now through the SMART program, you're compensated for your production based on a base rate minus the value of energy. Now as the program progresses, it goes through capacity blocks and in each block, the base rate lowers. At the same time, each year the value of energy rises because, well, that's what electricity prices do. They rise over time. And as you can see from this chart, the smart incentives in 2023 are pretty awful. And in fact, in some cases, they're non-existent. For example, the Eversource East service area, which includes Boston, the incentive is down to three tenths of a cent per kilowatt hour, which adds up to around $20 per year for our six kilowatt system. Now these really low and non-existent incentive rates are due to the sudden rise in electricity prices in 2022. And it makes for a really small carrot from the SMART program and a really big stick for paying for grid electricity. But there is a way to increase your SMART incentive rates and that's through adders. For example, if you pair battery with your solar system, you get an adder to this rate of around five cents per kilowatt hour. So let's say you pair our six kilowatt solar system with battery storage in the Eversource East uh, service area. The incentive is now worth over five cents per kilowatt hour, adding up to $400 per year and over $4,000 over 10 years. Other adders include three cents per kilowatt hour for low income property owners and six cents per kilowatt hours for installing solar panels over farmland high enough so you can grow crops and have livestock graze below them. This is a method called agrivoltaics, and if you can do it, there's a significant adder for you. Overall, the SMART program is no longer the amazing incentive it once was, but that's just kind of the nature of the beast. A lot of solar incentives are designed to decrease over time as the, to match the falling cost of solar and the rising cost of grid electricity. Now, in addition to tax credits in the SMART program, there are at least eight municipalities in Massachusetts that offer solar rebates that are really very good. For example, the Wakefield Municipal Light and Gas Department offers a solar rebate worth $1.20 per watt of solar capacity installed. So if we apply that to our six kilowatt system, that's a $7,200 rebate that can be combined with the tax credits. Here's how that would work. So let's say our six kilowatt system costs $30,000. That min municipal rebate would bring the upfront cost down to $22,800. Now your tax credits would be based on this amount. So the 30% federal tax credit would be worth $6,840. And the state tax credit would still be worth a thousand because it's still at the cap. The rebates and tax credits combined would bring the net cost of the system down to $14,150 or more than 50% off. Now these municipal rebates are only available to a small population of Bay Staters, but as you can see, it's totally worthwhile to check to see if your local municipality offers a solar rebate like this. Finally, it's important to point out that Massachusetts has one of the strongest net metering policies in the U.S. Now, net metering is the billing structure that allows solar owners to earn credit for the solar production that they put onto the grid and use that credit to offset the electricity that they pull off the grid when the panels aren't producing. Now, currently, most utilities in Massachusetts offer one-to-one -one net metering, which simply means that you earn the same amount for your solar exports, that excess electricity that you push onto the grid, as you pay for imports, which is the electricity that you pull off the grid. It's also worth noting that these policies last for 25 years, 
which is about as long as it gets in the US. Everybody likes making money, but it's important to remember that energy cost savings is just one of the many benefits of home solar. It just happens to be the benefit that makes it a total no brainer. Now there are two other main reasons why people choose to go solar. The first is environmental benefits. Now in January, 2023, Massachusetts generated around 80% of its electricity from gas fired power plants including one that's located smack dab in the middle of a handful of hospitals right in downtown Boston. Now the life cycle carbon emissions of generating electricity from gas fired power plants is about 12 times greater than generating electricity from rooftop solar. So by offsetting your electricity with your own home solar system, you can drastically reduce your carbon footprint and help your state wean itself off of fossil fuels. Better yet, rooftop solar requires zero additional land use and it turns your roof into a heat from a heat absorber into a clean power plant. Now, in addition to much higher carbon emissions, 2022 exposed just how vulnerable natural gas is to extreme price swings. And if you purchase all your electricity from a utility provider, you have no control over where that electricity comes from, how much it costs, and what your monthly bill payments are funding. And that's what we like to call being a captive rate payer. And it's gotta feel especially icky coming off a year of 45% price increases. But home solar gives you the ability to hedge against energy inflation and be a little more independent from your utility provider. All right, so what did we learn today? First, Massachusetts, and especially Boston, have wicked high electricity prices, which make for greater solar savings. Second, Massachusetts has a handful of solar incentives that can further increase those savings and reduce by reducing the cost of going solar. Third, <clears throat> the environmental benefits of solar are especially good in Massachusetts, given the state's reliance on fossil fuels, and especially natural gas electricity. And fourth, no, I was not able to get through a whole video about Boston without saying wicked ones. And I do apologize for that. Now, if you have questions about going solar in Massachusetts, uh, you can leave a comment below. Use the link in the description to go to the solar.com learning center, or better yet, hook up with a solar.com energy advisor and you can design a custom system together and use it to compare quotes from local installers and see exactly how much you can save. I'm Sam from solar.com. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will see you in the next video.